That was it. There was no turning back. That was the ultimate dark side. He had, he had changed. It was the Darth Vader moment, you know? Lex grew up just like his dad. Maybe that's what Lionel wanted, but it came back to haunt him. I am the villain of the story. What's different between Lex and Clark is that with both Jonathan and Jarrell, they wanted Clark to be greater than them, and they weren't afraid of that, and they wanted Clark to surpass them rather than just be them or live up to them. I know my fate to be a symbol of hope for them. I told you to rule with strength, but you chose the martyr's path. What makes you think you deserve a second chance? I can do it. We have a misrepresentation, I think, of Jarrell as just the voice. If it's just a voice, you're never going to see the human side. When he is the disembodied voice in the fortress, he does seem to have a sterner quality to them. However, when he appears in his human form, uh, he is much warmer. He, he is a character you could love. He must have known what it would mean to me to meet my real father, to speak to an actual person and not just some voice in the Arctic. To give him, you know, um, you know, a, a vehicle to express his emotions with, obviously, was very desirable. Jarrell is basically saying, oh my god, I need to do something. I really need to do something to show Clark that you have such a horrible misrepresentation of me here. And that's when you see that tape of Jarrell and Lara. The ship I designed to carry you to your destiny can only hold one Kryptonian, one who has so much potential, so unlike your father. He never really saw Jarrell in the flesh, not the real. Jarrell. And he really cared about his son, and you, you know, you could see that. And so that's what's interesting to me about him crossing over into this world. He does really care about Clark. It's wonderful that Jarrell is getting a little more human, or I think you could argue that he's seeing the necessity of appearing to become a little more human so that he can deal with his child that has special abilities because he has the human part. And so to see him in his pain and anguish, and that he was a loving parent, I think, uh, I thought it was very fulfilling. And that's when I think ultimately Clark realizes, I now see Jarrell differently. Now I can go ahead and become the man I'm destined to be, but I can freely make that choice. You were right, Dad. I never stopped blaming myself for what happened to you. It was a way not to have to let go. That's exactly what I have to do to move on. Even though Jonathan had passed a few seasons ago, he's still very much a part of Clark's everyday life. He becomes this spectral, wise individual that really guides Clark in a very spiritual type of way. At the end of Lazarus, we see Clark really reconcile his relationship with Jonathan. And my guess is that maybe Clark didn't even know there was anything to reconcile. Sometimes I think it would be easier if you were here. Jonathan suddenly represented um, the past and baggage in, in a way that Clark had to get over the fact that you don't just carry it around with you, you don't just cut it out, you embrace it as just a part of life. We're all confronted with trials, son. But the true measure of a man is how he chooses to react in the face of those trials. It was very important for Clark to hear that. Jonathan explains to Clark, you know what, son, you've taken these things from me, and I couldn't be more proud of you, but you have to keep going on your own way now. You have to understand that I've shaped who you are, but I don't need to determine what you do. You're going to go on and be better than me.